Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another backstage interview for this September edition of the Metals Investor Forum. I am joined for this conversation by James Buskard of Nevada Exploration. Um, thanks for coming to the conference, James, and for this extra conversation. Let's jump right into it. I mean, Nevada is always an area that people are really interested in. I think that's sort of even more so in this market than it has been in previous markets for a whole range of reasons. Um, but because it's a state that's so explored, uh, companies are being forced to look for gold in new ways. Now, you guys have been doing that in Nevada for a long time, but do you get the sense that there's a lot more uh, interest in your approach, in the in the groundwater approach, in at least a different approach to looking undercover than there has been? And and so is that is that helping you? Is that hindering you? What what impact does that have? I think what's been most helpful for us is that when you bring new eyeballs into the state, um, there's other parts of the world where I would say people are more um, uh, more advanced when it comes to trying to integrate new tools. Uh, Nevada is not unique in that the low hanging fruit has gone. Uh, having to look undercover is not just a unique to Nevada sort of story. And so, uh, yeah, as other groups uh, begin to pay more attention to Nevada, uh, the familiarity, the technical familiarity with integrating some new tools has gone up and uh, that's really helpful for us. Yeah, for sure. And so then it seems to me that there's a bit more widespread acceptance of these new approaches and ideas, um, which is helpful for you because when you started this a long time ago, I mean, you had to explain to everyone the very essence of what you were doing. And now there's probably some familiarity with this and perhaps even some competition. So you, the fact that you were able to pick up Simon um, and add him to your team, do you want to talk about that? Because I'm sure he's ended up being a bit of a key addition. Yeah, uh, uh, he, he has been. And Simon, uh, for those that don't know, he's our senior technical advisor. And he was Barrick's global chief geochemist uh, at a time when they were making the discovery of Gold Rush. And Gold Rush is at the north end of uh, Grass Valley, whereas our flagship project's at the south end. And Gold Rush was a fairly deep discovery. And when we're dealing with these sorts of projects in Nevada, similarly to ours, and you're drilling with five, six plus hundred meter deep drill holes. And, and for context, the CN tower is 550 meters. So you're trying to answer questions at the bottom of a drill bit while you're at the top of the CN tower and your drill bit's at the bottom of the CN tower. And all of the rocks look the same. You know, you know for, by and large, the, the, the clues aren't visual. So as you're trying to maximize the information that you can extract from these very expensive drill holes, and then most importantly, try and connect the dots between two drill holes that are, you know, however far apart, it, is, it, it very quickly becomes uh, a geochemistry puzzle almost. And it's the multi-element geochemistry that allows you first to identify what the units are. And then secondly, you get to see what is the alteration footprint um, or, or overprint and geochem overprint on this barcode of rocks. And the reason that's so important is if you're trying to vector undercover, if you're trying to say, look, it gets better up, down, left, right, east, west, whatever, you have to compare apples to apples. You can't look at one unit and try and compare its geochemistry to another unit. But what do you do when they all look the same? And furthermore, what do you do if this hydrothermal system has been so powerful that it's blasted the whole thing and there's very little of whatever was originally there still there? So for, to back out the alteration overprint, to then reconstruct what the geology looked like is what ultimately allows you to build the geologic model, say, where did the fluids come from? Where did they go? Where are they most likely to drop their mineral budget? And that was a workflow that Simon and his team at Barrick uh, really had to push at the forefront um, as they were understanding Gold Rush, which today has led to the continued step, step out, step out, and today's four mile. Being able to integrate that workflow right at the beginning at South Grass Valley uh, has allowed us to use these expensive wide spaced holes to paint the, um, the answer the geologic questions that we now have, so such that we now have the certainty to, to proceed to what's a fairly ambitious, expensive drilling program at a very constrained target, which is East Golden Gorge. So bringing Simon in to be able to piggyback on what happened at Gold Rush to now be able to drive our program at Southcrest Valley 
uh, the timing was fantastic. And, and, and plus, he's just such a fantastic gentleman to work with. Which is always lovely, for sure. Um, okay, I mean, that brings us to the obvious next thing, the big upcoming drill program. This is, I mean, this is the, the exciting moment. This is, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you obviously are talking about Gold Rush and Four Mile um, as analogies for how you can find this kind of system, but really they're also analogies for what it is that you're looking for. You're not looking for something small. The whole concept here is scale. So while this is a sort of expensive um, and ambitious drill program, the risk reward in exploration is always like, how much money do you spend for something that's risky? Um, it's a little bit different in your case, um, I'd say because if it works, it could work on a very large scale. I mean, that that's the goal. Yeah, right from how we designed our initial generative sampling program, you know, North Central Nevada we started with, to how we designed our basin scale, uh, follow-up programs to how we put the very first widespread set of drill holes in to where how we followed up with some tighter holes to answer some different questions. Everything has been uh, not just systematic, but it's predicated exactly on what it is we're looking for and what is, what's the scale of what it is we're looking for. And we're not trying to step out from a small outcrop or a small intercept to see if we can grow bigger. We're, we've always said, where can we hide a district scale? Literally, Nevada's fourth Carlin camp. Where could it be hidden? And so taking that different approach uh, required us to um, de-risk it in a slightly different way. And while, now that we've done that, and now that we've built the confidence and, and really the resolution, the geologic resolution, uh, it, it, it's really exciting to finally go and test one of these targets. It's, uh, it's um, yeah, I, I said, use the words trans transformational in the talk there. And, and it is, this is a potentially transformational drill program for everything that we've done to date here. So let's quickly just talk about the timing then. I mean, when, when is this happening? How long will the program take? When, when might results come out? How do you think you're gonna convey them? So people know, you know, if they're interested, when they might want to uh, get on board? Well, uh, half of the program, it's 10 holes. Half of the program's now permitted. We're in the process of uh, permitting the last few holes here. We, we expect in the next, uh, certainly by the end of October, we'd be fully permitted. Uh, discussions with drillers are going on presently. Uh, but the last piece that we're looking to, to plug here is putting together the, the right funding mix for the program. And uh, that's what we're working on right now. Once that piece has been uh, has come together, we're we're really in a position to move quite quickly. Uh, given the depths of these holes, they're they're likely to take about one month per hole. Uh, it is going to be likely where they land on average. Uh, I think the scenario that's most likely at this point is is trying to uh, bring two drill rigs for the project. It, it, I mean, subject to finding the right drilling crews because the last thing you want is an expensive uh, failed hole. So uh, subject to finding the right crews, we're, we're looking at bringing two rigs in. So you, you can do the math. It's a you know, five, six months sort of program. And so we're really not talking about a, a long time frame to, uh, uh, to, to, to see whether or not this uh, is moving forward in the right direction. Well, I wish you... The best of luck on the financing side of things. I'm sure there's interesting questions and opportunities and uh, choices to make on that end. And um, good luck out there. And thanks very much for taking the time to take us through it and keep us. make sure you keep us up to date with all the latest with Nevada Exploration.